Um, basically, uh, today our day six, uh, our course topics are basically wireless uh, networking, basics of wireless networking and server configuration. So today, day one, uh, this course will conduct uh, Sharna Mujumdar, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer and Communication Engineering, Potakali Science and Technology University. And also this course have another part, uh, firstly theoretical part, and then a small uh, uh, practical part, who will, who is, uh, I will show a practical session, so, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So now I would like to request, uh, uh, now, sorry, uh, a brief about Sharna Mujumdar. Sharna Mujumdar, basically, uh, he's, uh, she has completed uh, her BSc from Potakali Science and Technology University. Uh, from the Faculty of Computer Science and Engineering. And also she has completed her master's from uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Potokali Science and Technology University. Uh, now she is working as the Assistant Professor, Department of Computer and Communication Engineering. So- Okay, thank you and yes. sorry for the disturbance. Uh, thank you, sir. And also hello everyone from different time zone. Uh, I am Sharna Mojumdar, as already mentioned by my sir. Today I am going to describe some of the basic topics related wireless networking. Okay. These are the, uh, these are the course contents I have included in my lecture. I will try to cover the important conceptual parts of these topics. Okay. My first topic to describe is basics of radio communication. Actually, uh, the wireless communication began with wireless telegraph in 1896. After that, it has become a daily usable component to us. And, and today there are much more advances in wireless technology, like in satellite communications, wireless networking, um, and cellular telephony, etc. Et Okay, the number of worldwide mobile cellular subscribers were actually 34 million in 1993. Uh, but a recent survey says that the number has increased to 8.3 billion in 19, uh, sorry, 2019. Okay, actually there are uh, now a larger number of mobile phone subscriptions than there are people on our planet. Interesting, right? Uh, so now welcome to the confusing, complex, but very interesting world of wireless and mobile technologies. Okay, uh, wireless networks have many advantages over wired networks. The main advantage is its portability, uh, that means mobility. Again, um, a wireless network can be used in areas where uh, cables are impossible, very much impossible to install. Uh, like remote sensors uh, for trade shows or in historic buildings. And um, it can be seen that it is often impossible to wear remote sensors for uh, weather forecast, earthquake detection, or to provide environmental information due to economic reasons. So wireless connections uh, via satellite can help in this situation. You may know that uh, trade shows need a highly dynamic infrastructure but cabling takes long time and frequently proves um, too inflexible. Many computer uh, fairs uh, use WLANs as a replacement for cabling, okay? In case of any historical buildings, um, if we want information display on various products or various elements of that building, uh, then excess cabling may destroy valuable walls or floors. Um, also, uh, here, if we use wireless access points in a corner of the room, then uh, it can represent a solution for the problems. It has some disadvantage too. Actually, wireless communication uh, has some security vulnerabilities, but this problem can be solved through taking preventive measures. Okay, now what is wireless communication actually? As uh, the name explains, it is a method of transmitting information from one point or host to other. And obviously, without using any connection like wires, cables, or any physical medium, it will be truly wireless. No wire should be integrated here, okay? 
so this transmitting of information uh, information can be like voice or any kind of data and this transmission occurs uh, using electromagnetic waves actually and uh, we will learn more about electromagnetic waves later and um, in later slides okay then it shows some wireless uh, types of wireless communication like cellular communications which can be categorized as point to point communication uh, another is multi point communication uh, the example can be wireless computer network and third one is broadcast communication which can be categorized as radio service or tv broadcasting etc okay now we know frequency is more important for wireless communication for any kind of communication so here uh, i am uh, here i am showing some frequencies for communication so radio transmission actually can take place uh, using many different frequency bands and each band exhibits a certain advantage and disadvantages. Uh, here I am showing a figure. Uh, it gives a rough overview of the frequency spectrum uh, that can be used for data transmission. Okay, the, uh, here uh, the frequencies are starting with 300 hertz and going up to 300 terahertz. Okay. Here, these are the name of the frequency bands like VLF, it means very low frequency, LF, low frequency, medium frequency, and towards UV, that means ultraviolet light. Okay, here is the equation of which connecting frequency wavelength and the speed of light. We all know that electromagnetic wave travels at speed of light. Okay, and the speed of light is approximately 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Okay, now what's the use of these uh, special individual frequency bands actually? Okay, now for traditional wired network, frequencies uh, of up to several hundred kilohertz are used. Um, and for twisted pair copper wires, actually, uh, distances are used uh, to some, uh, the distances can be used to uh, some kilometer uh, for twisted pair copper wires, uh, while frequencies of several hundred megahertz are used with coaxial cable, coaxial copper cable. Okay. Here, fiber optics are used for frequency ranges for several hundred terahertz. Okay. The range is higher for fiber optic cable. Radio transmission actually uh, starts with several kilohertz. With the very low frequency range, uh, with the very low frequency range, and uh, the waves in the low frequency range uh, actually are used by submarines because uh, they can penetrate water. And for, because submarines are situated under water, therefore, here low frequency ranges are used for submarines. And they can also follow the earth surface. Okay, then medium frequency and high frequency range. They are mainly typical for transmission of hundreds of radio stations. Um, they can be uh, transmitted using AM, that means amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. Okay, the uh, frequencies uh, limiting these ranges actually are um, fixed by national regulation. And it can vary uh, from country, one country to another country. Okay, as we move to higher frequencies, actually here, uh, as we move to higher frequencies, the TV stations follow higher frequencies. Okay, the conventional analog TV mainly uh, they transmit their signals using very high frequency and ultra high frequency bands. Um, but uh, for ultra high frequency, uh, we can see that um, they can be used also uh, for mobile phone, uh, actually with analog technology like uh, or digital GSM technology, uh, digital uh, cordless systems, uh, CG cellular system. Okay, uh, but especially VSF mainly uh, very high frequency and ultra high frequency allow for a small antennas and relatively reliable connections for mobile telephony. Okay. Therefore, they are, um, then we can find the super high frequency and they are mainly used for directed microwave links and 
fixed satellite services. Some systems actually are planned in the extremely high frequency range, uh, which comes closer to infrared. The next step into the higher frequencies involves optical transmission. This is not only used for fiber optical links, but also for wireless communication. So, and our main concentration actually here to the wireless communication. Infrared transmission also can be used for directed links but and wireless communications, but for very short uh, distances and directed links. Okay, uh, finally, visible light uh, has been used for wireless transmission for uh, many years. Uh, light, uh, while light is not very reliable due to in its interference characteristics, but it is useful due to built-in human receivers. <coughs> okay, so um, this is for, this slide is for frequencies and regulations. As I have already mentioned, that radio frequencies are scarce resources. That means limited resources. Therefore, there must be some regulations to be set uh, for distributing these frequencies. And ITU, that means International Telecommunications Union, uh, it is responsible mainly uh, for setting regulations for wireless communication and also for wired communication. And I am repeating this. ITU, mainly International Telecommunications Uni uh, Union, it is located in Geneva and it is responsible for worldwide coordination of telecommunication activities, both for wire and wireless networks. And whenever, since we are uh, interested with wireless networks, we have to know uh, that the uh, uh, ITU radio communication sector, a uh, separate sector from ITU, um, it is represented as ITUR. It handles a standardization only for wireless sector. Total ITU, it is responsible for both wired and wireless, but ITUR, it is responsible for only wireless sector. It also handles um, frequency planning. Okay, the, I, this ITUR, that means International Telecommunications Union for Radio Communication Sector, it has split the world into three regions. Region one, it includes um, Europe, Middle East countries, uh, former Soviet Union and Africa. Region two includes Greenland, North South America, and region three comprises Far East, Australia and New Zealand. And uh, we have also, we should also know that within these regions, national agencies are also responsible for further regulations. I will not go in further detail uh, with this. Okay. Uh, types of electromagnetic carriers. I have already discussed about frequency ranges. So this slide is actually a recap for understanding the carrier for wireless communication. Okay, when the distance between the sender and receiver is short, an um, example can be a TV box and a remote control. Okay, if the distance between the sender and receiver is short, we will use infrared waves. In this kind of communication, infrared waves are used. But for long range distances between sender and receiver, uh, example can be TV broadcasting or any kind of cellular service. Uh, in this case, both microwaves and radio waves are used, but separately. Such as uh, microwaves are good when large areas need to be covered and no obstacle exists in the transmission path. No obstacle exists, okay? But for radio waves, it covers large areas but uh, it can handle the communication when there is obstacle of exist in the transmission path. I think, I think you have understood the topic. Uh, now I'm going for frequency carriers or channels. Okay, the information uh, or data, voice or data, uh, it is sent from sender to receiver and it is carried 
ওইটে ওয়েল ডিফাইন্ড ফ্রিকোয়েন্সি ব্যান্ড এন্ড দিস ফ্রিকোয়েন্সি ব্যান্ড উইল বি কলড এ চ্যানেল এন্ড ইচ চ্যানেল উইল হ্যাভ এ ফিক্সড ফ্রিকোয়েন্সি ব্যান্ড উইথ হুইচ ক্যান বি মেজারড ইন কিলোহার্টস এন্ড অলসো ইট উইল হ্যাভ এ ফিক্সড ক্যাপাসিটি হুইচ উইল বি মেজারড ইন বিট রেট and different frequency bands um, or channels can be used uh, to transmit information uh, parallelly or independently okay, here is an example for this example to understand the frequency channels frequency carriers or channels uh, we can assume something uh, like we can assume the spectrum of 90 kilohertz okay spectrum of 90 kilohertz and it is allocated over a base frequency b we have termed the base frequency as b and uh, the stations a and b which wants to be communicated with each other therefore we have assumed a spectrum of 90 kilohertz which is allocated over a base frequency b for communication between stations a and stations b here we have also assumed that there are three channels there are only three channels and each channel occupies only 30 kilohertz and each channel is simplex that means the transmission occurs only in one way okay this figure shows the thing sorry okay here a station a is the sender uh, or a point to be communicated and a station b is another point okay the, between this sender and receiver a spectrum of 90 kilohertz has been allocated and they have been divided into three separate channels with 30 kilohertz as we know the base frequency is b therefore the frequency range for the first channel that means channel 1 is b to b plus 30 kilohertz for channel 2 the range is from b plus 30 to b plus 60 kilohertz and rest of the range is used for channel 3 and uh, as we have we have uh, used only the simplex communication simplex transmission method only uh, one channel is considered here but uh, when it is used for full duplex communication then we have to use two different channels one is for front communication that means front channels another will be used for reverse channel okay here is a figure uh, this figure actually shows the radio propagation system when a high frequency alternating current uh, that means ac passes through a copper conductor the ac alternating current passes through a copper conductor uh, then uh, it generates a radio wave which are propagated into the air using an antenna and the antenna is a transmitter here a transmitter is the antenna okay then we can say that, that in the radio propagation system whenever uh, a high frequency ac passes through copper conductor it generates a radio waves and this radio wave is propagated into the air or atmosphere using an, an antenna that means transmitter okay now in any device any wireless communication system after a radio frequency signal has been generated in a transmitter uh, which I have already mentioned and shown in the previous slide uh, that when a radio frequency signal has been generated in a transmitter, some means must be used to radiate this signal to a space, to receiver, right? Okay, there, here, this device, that means the device which does the job is called antenna then antenna what an antenna does it uh, after a radio frequency signal has been generated in transmitter the antenna is responsible to radiate this signal through a space to a receiver okay. 
ಬರುತ್ತೆ ದಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಟರ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಬೈ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಂಟೆನಾ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಆಂಟೆನಾ ಹುಯಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಟ್ ದಿ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಂಟೆನಾ ಅಂಡ್ Uh, the uh, receiver uh, the antenna that will receive this signal from a space will call that antenna a receiving antenna uh, here i have to mention that radio waves become weaker as they travel a long distance i will also mention it in uh, my later slide okay uh, the uh, radio frequency energy i have already shown uh, told that the radio frequency energy is transmitted into a space in the form of an electromagnetic field the electromagnetic field and as uh, the traveling uh, electromagnetic field arrives at the receiving antenna here a voltage is induced into the antenna and antenna means um, we all know we may or may not know that antenna uh, consists of some conductor conducting material uh, therefore when a an, an antenna receives a signal electromagnetic uh, signal then a voltage is induced in that conductor and these voltage induced uh, into the receiving antenna they are passed into the receiver and converted back into the transmitted radio frequency information back to the transmitted information who is were sent from the sender but or transmitting antenna so uh, here i can say that uh, an antenna can be thought of as a transducer um, since it converts radio waves into electrical current uh, and voltages and vice versa okay uh, now uh, i have to mention that mainly there are three modes of propagation one is for surface mode and it is used only for low frequency waves surface mode it is the surface mode it is the example of surface mode and it is used only for low frequency waves it is the direct mode it is used for high frequency waves and it is the most important mode ionospheric mode and it is used for long distance high frequency waves it is used for both of these modes are used for high frequency waves but it is used for um, short distance and it is used for long distance okay the next topics i will discuss uh, is the wireless links and network characteristics there will be several uh, topics i will discuss in, under this concept okay it shows the elements of a wireless network and i will discuss about the elements um, in a wireless network using this figure okay the first element the first element of a wire, um, wireless network is the wireless host wireless host they are marked by red arrows here you can see okay as in the case of wired networks Uh, hosts are mainly end system devices okay so uh, the end systems are may be same for wireless host and wired hosts okay, the wireless host might be a, a smartphone or tablet or laptop anything uh, any internet of things like iot device sensor anything anything okay but one point to be mentioned here that the host themselves may or may not be mobile okay that means the wireless we are uh, talking about wireless hosts they can be communicate to um, without wire that means they are wireless but the host itself may or may not be mobile portable okay then the next topic the next elements of a wireless network is the wireless link okay uh, wireless link uh, sorry wireless links uh, these are marked here with red arrows so a host connects to base station uh, which i will describe later about base station uh, but here i have to mention it uh, to make 
you understand about the wireless communication link okay the a host connects to base station or to another wireless host through wireless communication link therefore it is also an element of wireless network right okay the different wireless link technologies can have different transmission rates and can transmit over different distances it depends on the wireless link technologies that what will be the transmission rate and what will be the distance where they can be transmitted the signals can be transmitted okay uh, here a uh, figure is shown uh, uh, and here it shows two key characteristics actually for link characteristics uh, the link transmission rates are and uh, the coverage ranges okay it is the link transmission rate and it is the coverage ranges and i will discuss later about these types of standards like hg 2.11 uh, standards so which is used for wi-fi i will you um, discuss it later in my later slides <clears throat> okay this figure is only meant to provide a basic idea of this characteristic uh, i will cover these standards later Okay, the next element of a wireless network is the base station. Base station. Here, base stations are also marked with red arrows. Okay. It is the key part of the wireless network infrastructure. We have already uh, seen uh, that for wireless and wired networks, both of the networks have wireless link and wireless host counterparts. Both of the networks uh, have these elements, but a base station has no obvious counterpart in a wired network. In a wired network, we will not find out any kind of base stations. It will work only for wireless network, where link and host, they can be found in the wired networks too, but a base station will not be found in a uh, wired network. A base station, what does a base station do? A base station is responsible for sending and receiving data to and from a wireless host. Actually, uh, whenever the host is associated with that base station. Okay? If a host is associated with a base station, there, then the base station will be responsible for sending and receiving any kind of data from that host uh, when we say wireless host is associated with a base station actually here we can mean two things uh, the first one is the host is within the wireless communication distance of the base station uh, it is obvious since uh, i have already told that the wireless hosts are wirelessly connected to the base station therefore it should be the host should be in the range of the base station okay the second one is host uses that base station to relay data between it and to the larger network okay. the examples can be cell towers mobile phone towers cell towers actually uh, in cellular network uh, also uh, there are uh, all of the access points in 802.11 wireless LAN, they are the examples of base stations. <clears throat> you can notice in the figure that the uh, base station is connected to the larger network through that is internet. Okay, these base stations are connected to the larger network. Okay, uh, here I, I have we come to a next slide which shows two modes actually uh, in whenever a base station um, is used or not the network can be divided into two modes actually infrastructure mode another is ad hoc mode and this slide shows the infrastructure mode if if hosts are associated with a base station then they will be called operating in infrastructure mode. If there is a base station in a wireless network, then we will call that network 
operating uh, in a infrastructure mode. So here these are the base stations, and this is the wireless network. And since it has some base, it has some base stations. We will call it working uh, in an infrastructure mode. Okay. Here all the traditional network circuits like address assignment, routing, um, anything. Uh, all the services will be provided to the network by the base station, connected base station. Okay. Uh, and we know that a mobile, uh, about a mobile phone, when a mobile host moves beyond uh, the range of one base station and enters into another base station range, then it will change its point of attachment to the larger network, actually the next network. Okay, and this process actually referred to as handoff or handover. It is called handoff or handover. Now the next is ad hoc network. I have already said some lines about it. Actually, wireless hosts um, in ad hoc network, wireless hosts have no such infrastructure with which to connect. There is no concept of base station, no concept of base station cell tower etc. Since there is an absence of such infrastructure, the host uh, themselves must provide all the services required. Such as, um, as in, in infrastructure mode, we have seen that the uh, base station is responsible for providing the services like routing, address assignment, DNS uh, system, anything. But in ad hoc networks, the host themselves are responsible for these services. <clears throat> okay. So I have already discussed the pieces uh, or the elements of a wired network, um, such as wireless links, wireless host, base station. Now, these pieces can be combined in many different ways to form different types of network, wireless network. And we can classify these wireless networks uh, according to two criteria. Actually, whether it is it has a infrastructure or it not. If it is working with single hub or multiple hubs, okay, then whether a packet in the wireless network crosses exactly one wireless hub or multiple, or this is one criteria. Another criteria is whether there is infrastructure such as base station in the network or not. Shorna, sorry. Shorna, can you speak loudly? Some uh, students uh, basically said that the sound low. Can you speak loudly or you can okay. take speaker? Yes, now loudly. Okay. Okay, sir. I'll try. Okay. Uh, since I have already uh, shown and told about some pieces or elements of a wireless network, now these pieces can be combined in many different ways to form different types of wireless networks. And we can classify uh, these types of wireless networks according to two criteria I have already mentioned. Again, I am repeating it uh, as some students are not able to hear my lines, uh, my talk. Uh, the two criteria are whether a packet in the wireless network crosses exactly one wireless soap or multiple wireless soaps. Or second criteria is whether there is infrastructure such as a base station or not. Okay, so we have used these two criteria and find found out four different uh, structure, four different networks. Okay, the four different networks are like single hop infrastructure based, multi hops infrastructure based, and single hop infrastructure less, multi hops infrastructure less. Okay, first one is single hop infrastructure based. These networks have a base station. Uh, of course, it will have a base station. Since I have already told that, uh, sorry, since I have already told that it is infrastructure based. So it should have a base station, right? Okay. 
so these networks will have a base station that will be connected to a larger wire wired network that means internet here all communication is between this base station and a wireless host over a single wireless host single wireless host and not more than one host only there the main difference so from uh, from this is the number of hosts and uh, the infra infrastructure therefore in this kind of category that is single hope infrastructure based there will be only one hope to be used and there will be a base station the, uh, uh, the examples uh, can be any kind of network you use in the classroom or library cafe um, restaurant anything okay the, uh, we can also say that the vast majority uh, of our daily interactions are with single hub infrastructure based wireless networks okay second is multiple hubs infrastructure based okay the only difference from the first one is multi hub in the first category there were only one wireless hub but in this category there will be multiple hubs actually in this network a base station is present that is wired to the larger network like first category but some wireless nodes may have to relay their communication through other wireless nodes they have to communicate with other wireless nodes uh, to be connected to the uh, big net uh, internet larger network okay so uh, it can the example can be uh, any kind of sensor networks any kind of sensor networks can be example of it okay the third one is single hub no infrastructure so i have already told that it is these two categories fall into the uh, into no infrastructure um, class so there will be no base station so in this network there will be no base station that is connected to wireless network so as we will see that one of the nodes in the single hub network may coordinate the transmission of the other nodes the example can be bluetooth networks it connects a small wireless devices such as keyboards <coughs> speakers headset etc okay then bluetooth can be an example of this category next uh, comes multiple hubs infrastructure less category okay there is no base station in these networks and uh, the nodes may have to relay messages among several other nodes in order to reach a destination nodes may be mobile vehicle anything as um, if the mobile nodes i am mentioning if the mobile nodes are vehicle then the network will be called vehicular ad hoc network that means vanet v a n e t vanet vehicular ad hoc network here uh, there is no base station and multiple hubs are used okay uh, now i am here to describe wireless link characteristics and signal propagation ranges okay like wired networks wireless communication networks also have senders and receivers of signals of course um, there should have sender and receiver for communicating okay uh, but in connection with signal propagation these two networks uh, means wired networks and wireless networks they exhibit some differences important differences mainly and in uh, wireless networks the signal has no where to determine the direction of propagation right in wireless network uh, we have um, there is no where actually to determine the direction of propagation the direction can be anywhere therefore but the signals in wired networks only travel along the wire therefore there is a directed path and the wire can be twisted pair copper wire coaxial cable fiber optic cable etc okay as long as the wire is not interrupted or damaged uh, the wire network typically exhibits same characteristics at each point but for wireless networks it is not possible uh, it has some propagation range signal propagation range 
due to its propagating characteristics of microwave uh, radiation or uh, radio frequency the propagation ranges has been divided into three cases three classes actually one is transmission range second circle is detection range and third circle is interference range okay first one transmission range within this radius of transmission ray sender transmission is possible sender transmission possible and also communication is possible so any receiver in this range will receive the signal with a low error rate and therefore the communication will be possible that means we can say that in this range or in this radius a trans in this transmission range communication will be possible with low error rate now in this detection rate uh, range within uh, this radius detection of the transmission will be possible but not communication communication will only be possible in this range in transmission range but in detection range there will be no communication only detection is possible because the error rate will be more more and more uh, is large enough to uh, differ from background noise uh, and therefore uh, the error rate will be too high to establish communication so we can say communication is only possible in transmission range but in detection range no communication is possible only detection of signal is possible but what will be in the interference range okay. within this radius if any receiver is in this radius he will not be able to communicate or detect the signal the sending uh, transmitted signals and this uh, a receiver uh, it, since he, it is not able to detect any signals of transmitter but the signals may disturb other signals okay this, therefore the interference range is also important uh, there in this range no communication is possible no detection is possible but therefore these range is uh, uh, important because we have to omit these signals or control these signals as these signals may disturb other signals okay <clears throat> the second uh, slide of signal propagation um, actually i have already told i have repeatedly told i have told some lines and i, I think i should um, say that line more and more time okay, uh, such in free space uh, radio signals propagate as light does right okay that means uh, they follow a, a straight line so if such a, a straight line exists between a sender receiver uh, then we will call that line a line of sight that means los line of sight even if no matter exists between the sender and receiver uh, that means if there is a vacuum uh, where uh, no matter can exist uh, between sender and receiver the signal is still experiences some free space loss because as the distance increases there is an inverse square law that as the distance increases the received power decreases okay, i will also describe this later okay so even without any matter between sender and receiver, uh, some, there are some additional parameters um, which are also important, uh, like the received power uh, can also depend on the wavelength of the signal um, uh, or the gain of the receiver or transmitter antenna. It will also be an important topic. As soon as there is any matter between sender and receiver, the situation becomes more complex. Uh, more radio um, actually in most cases the radio transmission takes place through the atmosphere right uh, therefore the signals travel through air rain snow um, dust etc so while the path loss or attenuation does not cause too much trouble for short distances uh, 
uh, that is for the example can we learn uh, it for learn it will not cause uh, mass disturbances but the atmosphere heavily influences transmission over long distances that means uh, it can be very much harmful for satellite transmission even mobile phone systems are also influenced by weather conditions such as heavy rain as you have already noticed that whenever there is a heavy rain outside the signal of mobile can be slow um, it becomes slower then uh, then rain can uh, because uh, the region is uh, that the drop of rain it can absorb much of the radiated energy of the antenna and this effect uh, maybe is used in a microwave oven to cook so um, uh, since the rain drop of rain can absorb the radiated energy so the communication links between sender and uh, receiver or or we can say between two mobile devices may break down for heavy rain as i discussed in the previous section uh, that signal propagation in free space almost follows a straight line like light but in real life we rarely have a line of sight because um, we rarely have a line of sight between sender and receiver uh, mobile phones are typically used in big cities where there can have skyscrapers mountains uh, large buildings okay um, the mobile phone user can drive through an alley it is a uh, here several effects uh, effects occur in addition to the attenuation caused by the distance between sender and receiver <clears throat> which are again very much frequency dependent uh, they are like the problems can be like uh, fading uh, shadowing reflection scattering and diffraction okay now uh, it, 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 i am going to discuss another problem of wireless communication uh, and it is termed as multipath propagation okay together with the direct transmission from a sender to a receiver the propagation effects mentioned in the previous section uh, lead one of the most severe radio channel impairments and uh, multipath propagation and here the figure shows a sender the figure shows a sender on the left side you can see uh, it is the sender and it is the receiver left side is the sender and in the right side there is a receiver that means the receiver is in this red car okay the, in the radio waves emitted by the sender can either travel along a straight line or they may be reflected at a large building or scattered at a smaller obstacle so this simplified figure actually only shows three possible paths for the signal three possible paths one Two and three, three possible paths here. In reality, uh, many more paths will be um, here, and that uh, it is uh, possible to have many more paths due to the finite speed of light. The signals traveling along different paths will have different lengths and will arrive at the receiver at different times. Right? Okay. This effect. is called delay spread delay spread and that means the uh, here the original signal is spread over in a wide area the original signal is spread and due to the different delays of parts of the signal that the signal is not spread it is narrow signal but here the signal has been spread what are the effects of this delay spread why we are studying these what are the effects of it on signal representing data okay the first effect is uh, here is um, the effect is shown also the first effect is that a short impulse will be smeared out into a broader impulse or rather into several weaker impulse okay uh, in this figure only three possible paths are shown and thus the impulse at the sender will result in three smaller impulses at the receiver here is one impulse 
uh, actually two impulses one is black color uh, mentioned in black color another is blue color here at the receiver we can see that the signal with black color has been divided into three small or weaker impulses and also uh, the same is true for the blue color impulse it is also divided into three weaker impulses have the uh, number is three because we have considered only three number of parts here between sender and receiver okay for a real situation with hundreds of different parts hundreds of different uh, thousands of different parts this implies that a single impulse will result in many many weaker impulses at the receiver and each path can have a different attenuation therefore the receive pulses will have different power their power will not be same okay that, that some of the received pulses will not will be too weak even to be detected okay they will appear as noise now consider the second impulse second impulse means the blue color impulse here yeah, the second impulse on the sender side both impulses are separated okay they are not integrated they are separated by a distance okay <clears throat> but at the receiver side both impulses interfere both in impulses interfere that means they overlap in time in this middle position we can see that both impulses interfere here both blue and black color uh, black color impulses interfere here now consider that each impulse should represent a symbol every impulse represents one symbol and uh, one or several symbols should represent a bit i am considering it uh, the main situation real situation may or may not be the same here i am considering uh, for the example that each impulse represents a symbol and several symbols could represent a bit therefore the energy intended for one symbol now spills over to the adjacent symbol and this kind of effect is called inter symbol interference short form is isi isi okay that means in this middle position the power of the first signal attenuates due to the second impulse and therefore this interference will be called inter symbol interference the higher the symbol rate to be transmitted the worse the effects of isi will be as the original symbols are moved closer and closer okay and so we can say that isi that means inter symbol interference limits the bandwidth of a radio channel okay there can be another problem here uh, that due to this interference the signals of different symbols can cancel each other out and therefore they will never be received by the receiver So after getting uh, these problems, uh, so considering these problems, actually there uh, some differences has been shown. Um, differences between wired link and wireless link. In the wired links, these problems uh, cannot be found, but in the wireless link, these problems exist. That means first problem is decreased signal strength. Second is interference from other sources. Third is multipath propagation. All of these topics uh, have been covered in the previous slides, so I am not explaining this in this slide. Only I am showing the differences between wired link and wireless links. Okay, the next slide, <coughs> sorry, shows the SNR concept. Having considered the impairments uh, that can occur on a wireless channel, let's next turn our attention to the host receiving the wireless signal. That means the receiver. 
the receiver receives an electromagnetic signal that is a combination of a degraded form of the original signal transmitted by the sender we have already mentioned it that the signal uh, the transmitted signal it will be it will surely be degraded due to the attenuation and multipath propagation effects and also background noise of the environment therefore there comes a term named as snr signal to noise ratio and it is actually relative measure to the uh, strength of the received signal and the noise and it will be uh, defined uh, or measured in decibel okay uh, here i am showing a figure um, it also shows a term ber it means uh, bit error rate actually bit error rate snr means signal to noise ratio ber means a bit error rate you know, for our purposes here we need only know that a larger snr makes it easier for the receiver to extract the transmitted signal okay that means in if we, the power is increased uh, of the signal then snr will be increased and ber will be decreased for a smooth communication we will need increased snr and decreased ber okay now i am going to another topics uh, and it is wireless ap actually i will not um, i will not explain very much about this i will give a concept about wireless ap or wap actually um, wireless access point wap means wireless access point and actually it is a networking device and it allows multiple wireless devices to connect with each other through a access point multiple wireless devices can be connected with each other also uh, it allows wireless capable devices to connect to a wired network okay now uh, based on the functionalities it can be categorized uh, based on many um, class uh, but i have only shown three classes here uh, which has been categorized through functionalities actually based on functionalities and the categories are standalone access point multifunction access point and controlled access point okay uh, first term is standalone access point actually uh, a standalone access point uh, provides same functionality in wireless network who is a switch or hub provides in the wired network okay uh, i think uh, this line is important to uh, differentiate between wired network and wireless network here uh, no switch or hub but the standalone access point provides same functionality as the switch or hub which are used in wired network and it provides connectivity between different wireless devices it accepts them uh, from the connected device and uh, based on its physical address uh, it forwards uh, the packet or the frame to the destination device here in this figure uh, i have shown that pc0 that means this pc is communicating with laptop 0 through this access point there is only one access point and it is connecting uh, this laptop to this pc okay uh, now multifunction access point multifunction access point actually is the combination of two or more devices a standalone access point in case of a standalone only one device is uh, responsible for communication but multifunction access point uh, in case of multifunction access point uh, there will be a combination of two or more devices that means more than one device if there is one device it will be called a standalone but if there is a combination of more than one devices it will be called multifunction access point in this combination an additional device or uh, devices are merged with the access point to provide additional functionalities okay 
the example can be a wireless router which isp uh, internet service provider uses to provide internet connection uh, it may be the perfect example of wireless uh, multifunction access point uh, and uh, it actually consists of three devices an access point a regular ethernet switch and a router here it is a uh, isp office uh, internet service uh, they provided provide and their access point is a mainly combination of uh, three devices access point router and ethernet switch now comes the controlled access point the controlled access point actually works as a client of wlc wlc means wireless lan controller wireless lan controller and these types of access point works as the client of wlc uh, technically um, a control um, access point is known as uh, lwap that means lightweight access point and in this type of access point this lwap it does not take any forwarding decision uh, other two categories like standalone and multifunction they have the right to take any forwarding decision but in case of controlled access point the access point does not have any kind of forwarding decision it can receive a frame then uh, upon receiving uh, from the connecting device uh, instead of forwarding it to the destination device i am repeating instead of forwarding to the destination device it forwards that frame to the wlc that means wireless lan controller and it will control this forwarding decision forwarding section then the wlc based on the security configuration uh, makes decision uh, that whether the received frame should be forwarded or discarded yeah. if the frame needs to be forwarded discarded then uh, it discards the um, wlc discards that packet or frame but if the frame needs to be forwarded then it sends that frame to that lwap that means lightweight access point and therefore to um, to which the destination device is connected actually then that lwap sends this frame to the destination device <coughs> here i am uh, showing sorry Here I am showing this wireless LAN controller, and these are the access points connected with this uh, LAN controller as a client. Therefore, the example can be uh, any WLC LWAP setup uh, in any company environment to span a single wireless network in large geographical area. Okay. my next topic is to discuss about wi-fi standards and it is 802.11 wireless lan okay here i am showing a table yeah. at first i have to know that wireless lans are now one of the most important access network technologies in the internet uh, though many technologies and standards are available and developed in 1990s but one class of standard were uh, became popular and that is the standard uh, named as IEEE 8021.11 wireless lan and it is also known as wi-fi it is also known as wi-fi and in this section, actually, we will take a look at 802.11 wireless LAN. Uh, as summarized in this table, there are several 802.11 standards. These are the standards. Okay, there are several standards. Now, the 802.11 B, G, N, S, C, and X, they are the successive generations of 802.11 technology. Okay. So uh, there uh, uh, have 802.11 N, SC, and AX standards. They have uh, mainly recently been branded as Wi-Fi 4, 
five and six. Okay, and uh, uh, actually um, they are competing with four G and five G cellular network branding. And the next tools are uh, the eight zero two point one on AF and AA. These standards operate over longer distances and are aimed at IoT sensor networks. <clears throat> okay, these are not like um, simple Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi are branded as these Wi-Fi four, five, and six, but these are for uh, longer distance uh, operation of IoT or sensor networks. <clears throat> okay, uh, however, as shown in this table, the standards have some major differences at the physical layer. And these devices operate in two different frequency ranges, exactly. Two, mainly 2.4 gigahertz range and five gigahertz range. And the 2.4 gigahertz range is an unlicensed frequency band, actually. Uh, um, uh, at five gigahertz, uh, these lamps have a shorter transmission distance for a given power level um, and suffer more from multipath propagation. Okay. So in the next, uh, okay, here uh, at the last comment is that all use CSMA by CA for multiple access. And uh, I will cover this topic later. Okay. So for the frequency ranges, uh, actually I am showing another table. Uh, here um, we, I can show this, actually, these three rows, actually. So it is the Wi-Fi 6 version. And uh, here I can show that uh, this version is 6E, that is extended version of Wi-Fi 6. We have shown that Wi-Fi 6 version only used 2.4 and 5 gigahertz range. But Wi-Fi 6E, it uses three different ranges, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz. And also there is a, um, another generation to be announced, Wi-Fi 7, and it will also work in these three different frequency ranges. Uh, like 2.4 gigahertz, gigahertz band, uh, it actually provides um, greater coverage, but it transmits data at slower speed. But 5 gigahertz band, it can provide less coverage, but transmits data at faster speeds. And the latter <clears throat> and last, the 6 gigahertz band, uh, it is introduced actually with the new Wi-Fi 6E standard. It provides the least coverage, but transmits data at the fastest speeds of all of the three frequency ranges, 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. Okay. Uh, in the previous slide, I have shown a topic named CSMA CD, which means carrier sense multiple access with pollution detection. Okay. This kind of technology, or it is a, actually a MAC scheme, um, media access control schemes, and it is used in the wired networks. Now, a question arises that. Uh, why, whether it is possible to use elaborated MAC schemes from wired network in wireless network? The answer is no. Actually, the working um, mechanism of CSMA CD, uh, it, it can work as follows, that um, a sender senses the medium at first to see if it is free. If the medium is busy, the sender waits until it is free. Otherwise, uh, if the medium is free, the sender starts transmitting data and continues to listen into the medium. Okay. Now, uh, why does this scheme fail actually in wireless networks? Okay, uh, here I can say that CSMA, CD, it is um, not really interested in collisions at the sender, but rather those at the receiver. The signal should be receiver without collisions but the sender is the one detecting, colli detecting collisions. So they, um, there is not a problem with, the, with uh, using wear, but in wireless system, it causes problems. And there can have several problems. Uh, we can turn the problems, um, we can see 
the problems the termed as hidden terminal problems <coughs> and exposed terminal problems so here uh, i am um, i can consider to uh, this scenario with the mobile phones actually uh, i have already mentioned earlier uh, about transmission range detection range and uh, interference range so in this example is the range transmission range of a covers only b but not c again the transmission range of c covers only b but not a therefore uh, but the transmission range of b covers both a and c now if a starts sending um, to b a, a mobile a starts say want to send to b but c does not receive this transmission at the same time c also want to send something to b and senses the medium so, uh, there uh, uh, screens a cannot detect this uh, thing uh, c um, of transmitting by c therefore a collision occurs at b and this collision is, uh, occurs due to the hidden terminal problem since a terminal is hidden by c and c terminal is hidden for a this is the um, <clears throat> problem of hidden terminals another problem is exposed terminals while hidden terminals may cause collisions but these exposed terminal problems uh, it causes unnecessary delay now we can consider a situation that uh, b sends something to a and c wants to transmit data to some other mobile phone outside the interference ranges of a and b it can be anywhere outside these range it can be anywhere another mobile phone like d okay now uh, and it detects that the carrier is bg okay now uh, c postpones its transmission until it detects the medium as being idle again that means free again but as a is outside the interference range of c a her waiting is not uh, not necessary actually so therefore causing a collision at b does not matter because the collision is too weak to propagate to a in this situation c is exposed this terminal is called exposed to b <clears throat> okay therefore there are several access methods used um, in the wireless networks i will not cover this topic in my lecture but the terms can be identified like hdma fdma tdma cdma okay <clears throat> then uh, i have shown the problems with hidden terminal and exposed terminals now how to solve these problems this problem is solved by using csma ca or third carrier sends multiple access with collision avoidance so how it works okay with our previous example i am showing um, the solution okay <coughs> here um we have seen uh, some terms like rts and cts here rts means request to send and cts means clear to send here in this uh, technology actually not cd but in ca collision avoidance here uh, a does Sharna, not sorry uh, Sharna, yeah. can you finish within 10 minutes okay sir okay so i will try to finish in 10 minutes okay no. Okay, now that's uh, here with the, uh, with the use of RTS and CTS, uh, the problems with the collision detection found in wired networks that can be solved in this technique is wireless networks. Okay, then uh, my uh, concept uh, to describe is WLAN. Okay. WLAN actually um, a wireless distribution method for two or more devices <clears throat> okay it is uh, actually um, the terms wlan and wi-fi are used interchangeably 
but uh, the two wireless technologies are quite different. Actually, this figure shows the difference. Here, uh, it shows that WLAN is a part of wireless technology and Wi-Fi is, uh, is just a type of WLAN. Okay, but uh, all of Wi-Fi are WLAN, but all of WLAN will not be considered as Wi-Fi. This is the main difference. Okay, the, my last topic uh, to consider is wireless security and encryption. Okay. So what is wireless encryption actually, and why is it used? So wireless encryption actually secures your wireless network with an authentication protocol. And uh, it will require a password or network key when a user or device tries to connect. Uh, here actually I will provide some information about different types of wireless encryptions that are commonly supported on most Wi-Fi enabled devices. And adapters and routers. Okay, first one is wired encryption privacy or wired encryption protocol. Here, one uh, thing should be mentioned that here the term uh, for W is wired but not wireless. This technology or protocol is used in the wireless encryption system but the uh, term is wired because it is also used in another uh, system okay Th therefore there are two encryption types 64 bit and 128 bit okay. in 64 bit configuration it uh, it can have two system if it uh, if you use a hexadecimal digit then you have uh, to require a 10 character password or if you use ASCII characters, you will require eight characters. Uh, uh, for each 128-bit, uh, in this configuration, it will require 26 character password when you use hexadecimal digit and 14 characters when you use ASCII characters. And these are the advantages, disadvantages, like um, this is easy to configure, but uh, it is uh, not fully secure. Is disadvantage is like it is not fully secure. Therefore, it will uh, secure your wireless network uh, when there is no encryption at all. But uh, if you want fully secure system, then uh, it should not be used. Okay. The next one uh, of wireless encryption is Wi-Fi protected access. That means WPA or WPA2. There are some encryption type like TKIP, PSK, EAP, and um, here it, it, it has also some advantages like it is also easy to configure and it will give better encryption than previous one, okay? But uh, main disadvantage is it is not supported by all devices. Okay, the last one um, I will describe is the Wi-Fi protected setup, okay? Now, how do I use WPS, that means Wi-Fi protected setup. We can use WPS using PIN or PBC. PIN means personal identification number, and it has to be taken from the web interface of the WPS device. And it is entered in the access point or um, client WPS device to make the connection. You will need a PIN always and it will be provided to you by the web interface of the WPS device. Another uh, method is PVC, that means push button configuration. And uh, simply uh, it has, uh, it will help you in by simply push a button. Uh, you have to push a button um, uh, or in physical or virtual button on both WPS devices to make the connection. It has also several advantages actually. It, the main disadvantages is if, uh, if there is some network in ad hoc mode, uh, then it will not be supported. And WPS will not work in the ad hoc mode network. Okay, um, it, it is the problem. And also the main problem is though it gives much security, 
and the security key um, is not randomly generated uh, so anyone cannot gauge it um, so it gives much security but this technology is fairly new so not every manufacturer support it okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of the wi-fi protected setup there are some other options to be mentioned uh, like um, we have to know that not all encryption types are supported on all routers and adapters so you have to check your device manual for supported encryption protocols that which protocol is supported by your device okay then uh, the default encryption key may be located on the bottom of your router or it can be on the manual depending on the router manufacturer um, uh, uh, however uh, actually i have taken so much time and uh, the, this is the last uh, slide of my lecture actually and thank you to all if you have any questions please feel free to ask thank you okay thank you uh, sharna for your uh, informative lecture so uh, dear participants if you have any question uh, you can ask uh, question answer box so our instructor will reply you okay yes. okay so far uh, i think sharna madam has already discussed about details in wireless network and several kinds of uh, uh, technology and some other issues so to uh, just uh, brief i want to share with you a packet tracer topology uh, i think uh, okay okay i think uh, can you uh, see my screen okay yes sir okay Okay, actually, this is a small topology. Uh, basically, a totally wireless uh, network-based uh, topology. Here, uh, you can see I have used a uh, IP address. So I think you have already familiar with this one. Uh, 192.168.1.0 24. This block I have assigned for this uh, wireless network. Uh, basically, I have used here several components. Uh, I think you are familiar with this laptop, smartphone, tablet this is the end user uh, here i have used lap that means uh, light access point uh, cisco light access point or uh, three cisco light access point i think uh, uh, when you go to the uh, this part i think the uh, network devices and wireless i have already designed that's why i just uh, explain it uh, so you can check it uh, the uh, uh, this one lap uh, I think, uh, okay. And also I have used a wireless LAN controller, WLC. I think uh, 250, uh, 3504 model. You can see basically LAP. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, LAP, Cisco lightweight access point. All three are Cisco lightweight access point. Uh, basically, uh, this is totally Cisco unified wireless network architecture. And it is an AP, that means wireless access point that is designed to be connected to a, to a wireless LAN controller. So this AP, basically they have no, uh, uh, I think is, uh, they have no firmware or anything. You cannot configure it or like this, but this is totally controlled by wireless LAN controller. Okay. Uh, and after uh, these all end users are connected to lightweight access point, and these access point all are controlled by uh, wireless controller. So here you can, I have already uh, some end user equipment. This is light, uh, lightweight access point. And also I have taken it uh, Swiss. And also uh, I have take, uh, here inserted a, a server and wireless LAN controller and a PC to control this wireless LAN controller. Okay. So this is my topology. I have you already designed it and also the connecting. So all are now connected. So I am just sorry. I, I just I need to blank file. Okay. So before going to another issue, uh, when you take any uh, any uh, 
LAP, you need to basically insert a power. Basically, this component has no power. Okay. So basically, uh, when you inserted the LAP, uh, this this is the interface. So you need to connect a power. You can see now uh, this network is now down. That means this is not up, but down. So you need to power up. So for power up this uh, LAP, so you need to take this power cable and connect it to this port. Okay, after that, this will activate. Do you understand or not? If you have any question, you can uh, put down the question answer box. And in this way, you need to configure these three. Well, I have uh, uh, created three uh, LAN, basically WLAN, academic, uh, three AP, academic, CSC building, and BBA. Okay, so, and I for getting the IP address, I have added a uh, server. Uh, but you can use uh, VLAN or DHCP pool. See, uh, previously, showups are already discussed. I have al also uh, uh, discussed. So you can take uh, the DHCP server other way. But here I have used a DHCP, a, a server PC and uh, service. I need to the uh, DHCP. I need to own this DHCP. Okay. So I need to configure this one. Basically, for uh, this is server I have already configured. That's why I just explaining. Uh, so here I have used actually 192.168.1.1 this IP for server and all and uh, sorry, yeah, just two. Uh, the uh, the uh, 192.168.1.2. One, sorry, 1.1, 1 1.1 .1 for server and the LAN controller, basically you can see this LAN controller, uh, 1.2. But uh, if you take in the LAN controller as it, uh, when you insert it from the, this LAN controller from here, uh, I think the 3504, if I show you, in that case, configure management, you can see the default LAN controller IP is basically 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask. Since I have used another network uh, and I have used my clan, so it's not a big issue. But default LAN, default LAN controller IP is, you, you need to remember 192.168.1.1. So I have configured this one. So this one, one uh, 192.168.1.1. 1.2. This is uh, you can management IP. That means this is the uh, LAN controller IP, and this is the server IP. So I need to configure the server first. I I think I have already uh, okay uh, configure some uh, one 1.2. This is the server IP I have used, and the subnet mask is as usual 24 24 bit, and I need to configure again the uh, sorry, desktop, uh, sorry, service, I need to take the DHCP. So you can see this DHCP. So, okay. Sorry, DHCP IP, basically default gateway, this server IP is the default gateway. And also the WLC, that means oil land controller IP should be two. So, I think I can change this one to, and I need to remove it. And here you can see the server pool another, this one default. So this is the server IP and uh, you need to configure it just pool name you can change. Uh, just, uh, and also starting IP also can change or start IP address and subnet mask as usual and maximum number of user is a and WLC address uh, 1.2 you need to put and then uh, save it. Okay, so this is the server IP basically for DHCP server, that's all. And I need to configure this one. So management, you need to go to here and 1.2 is the IP address of this LAN controller and DNS server, this one as usual. Now, this PC, I, I want to con uh, control the LAN controller from configure or control this LAN controller from here. PC1 and you can check this PC IP address 1.3 as usual subnet mask and default gateway 1.1. So full network basically default gateway 1.1 I have used. This is the server IP address we have used. 
and you can see now uh, basically there is no information but automatically this lap already got the gigabyte ethernet zero already got dot six ip and for csc uh, this one uh, dot five and this one uh, dot four so four five six already taken uh, the ip this lap from this dscb server okay so now i need to uh, i have already compared this pc now i need to go to this pc to access the uh, access the online stand controller then we need to go to the web browser uh, here the you need to write the ip address actually 192.168.1.2 so we need to wait some times uh, for the graphical user interface of this LAN controller. <clears throat> so sometimes need to uh, load this uh, graphical user interface, uh, basically this one. So this type of interface we, we, we will see. Uh, this is the outline, okay. Okay, so you can see just uh, this is the IP of a uh, WLAN controller IP, and this is the graphical user interface of the uh, uh, WLAN controller. So you need to create the admin, and also you need to create a eight-digit admin password. But follow the rules. PSTU. Okay, so you can uh, after uh, create the user ID, you can see you, you can uh, use any name. So is there any question? Or Pita, is there any question? Okay. No, sir. Okay. So you can say time zone, you can fix 540 as a zone, not, not a problem. You can use this uh, management IP address, which is uh, which should be the WLAN controller 192.168.1.2 and also the subnet mask 255.255 as usual zero and the default gateway should be the server IP address 192.168.1.1 and management IP as usual zero will configure it. Okay, then I need to network name but initial network name, basically uh, this one first one academic academic uh, wpa2 personal this is the security to access this ap uh, so i need to academic the fast press academic and as usual this one so then next to next uh, this is this is a default 192.0.21 parcel ip address so far no configuration here so i have configured this one this is the summary uh, of the summary of the uh, configuration and you need sir, to uh, excuse me sir uh, yes. one participant asked one question uh, uh, to repeat the ad hoc network okay basically that was related to uh, by shorna shorna are, shorna are you available shorna Sir, you can proceed after the after completing your uh, lecture session. Sean will okay, okay. repeat. Okay. So, uh, so no, no need to wait here. Basically, you can just cross this uh, PC, and again we can access. Okay. So since I I have already configured, so now I need to write HTTPS HTTPS clone double slash 192.168.1.2. So this is the uh, interface. So I need to log in and I need to use my username and password PSTU. Okay, so you can see this is the basically Cisco model, the 
uh, WLAN controller. This is the this is the interface and management IP address, software version, and other issue. Just summary of this uh, configuration and uh, access point summary total three already connected up three down down and all IP three. You can see the details of what the connected but not any configuration. Physical or it is just logical or does the WLAN controller? No, it's a log physical device. So you you can see it's the physical device in packet pressure. It's the logical, but this is the physical device. If, if you want to manage your uh, wireless network, you can use this one or Fortinet, another type of uh, WLAN controller has. Okay, and any other issue? Wahidullah Umair. Okay, so you can uh, write uh, below. So now. I need to create the WLAN. Okay. So you, you can see that before the, I have already created WLAN, which is name is academic. So I just want to uh, show this one. So uh, WLAN. So I, I just want to configure one, then you can understand. So just click this uh, one ID, WLAN ID. Uh, because it's a simulation. So you can see profile name and also SSID name is academic and enable. Okay. And also security. You, oh, we have used WPA plus WPA2 security to access the SSID. And also I just use uh, the none. So and quality of service uh, for and uh, this one. Okay. I just apply. Now, just I have created a one WLAN. Okay. And also the AP group. Uh, this is there is a default AP, group, AP uh, access point group. So I want to create AP group. This group for academic. Academic. Okay. Okay. So you can control control wireless security management and other issue by using this controller. So academic I have created, thus need to go to academic AP group, you need to assign a WLAN. Okay, WLAN access. So you need to add this academic to this WLAN. And also you need to assign the AP, three AP already connected. So I want to assign the assign just one AP uh, with this uh, academic uh, WLAN. And you need to make, because there is a uh, graphical user interface, some issue. So add button is here. Okay. So, okay. So, is it, it like Unify controller? Uh, Unify controller? Yes, sir. Uh, Unify, that means. Uh, wi Fi controller, like this one, you say. Or Unify any about uh, OS device, yes, like this one, Unify controller. That means you, basically, this device is used for uh, your wireless network controller. Okay. For defined company has different kinds of controller. Okay, Umair. And you, uh, you can use also Fortinet I, uh, in PS2 campus, also defined university campus. This type of access point you can see in your hall. And also this wireless manager has a license. So you need to take a license. After that, you can use this device. Okay. And so this, this is uh, access point I have add and AP I have already added and I'll, another one I need to create. And just create a, I am just creating another WLAN or another. Profile name CSC, SSID CSC. Okay. 
a little bit slow because it's a emulator. Uh, you need to enable and security none. I just for skipping this uh, part. Basically, uh, so I need to add the group. I need to add the CSC. Also the CSC add in this uh, AP group. Now I need to configure the CSC. So I think you have already checked this one, this IP, what type of main. You can see this IP name is now, uh, sorry, LAP name is now academic. Can you see the academic? And this one is still not any, uh, this one also academic. And this one also academic because I have not yet assigned. So I just create another one. Uh, so simulator CSC. This one WLAN. Create this one. This one CSC should be added here. And AP. AP, I need to assign this AP to this one and also assign this one. Okay, I just check this one none, this one academic, and this one also academic, but just configure this one. Apply. Okay. So I need to check again, this one academic. Sorry. Okay. Just need some time so we, I can configure this one also. So I want to connect this one also. This device, are, if I want to connect, you need to go to wireless. Uh, in here you can act the, just SSID, you just uh, write here the academic. And static, I can see what happened. I think you can see this uh, smartphone is now connected. This AP with this uh, uh, wireless look, uh, that means the LAN controller. Do you understand or not? So if I enable this one also, config, wireless, and SSID should be act or demit. Okay. And you can see the DSCP, what type of IP there. And also you, this IP also connected this one. So now I can check this one. This one also academic, but okay. So this one CSC management, okay. This one already assigned. AP already I need to assign. Okay, I need to configure another one. Just create another LAN. Security, no, just general, you need to enable this SSID, apply, quality of service you can assign, policy mapping or others you can assign. Basically, different kinds of uh, service you can take from this wireless LAN controller. And also AP group, in our, if you create any group, then you need to group another one, DBA. So I need to configure this BBA again. That means you need to create WLAN first and then you need to uh, assign the AP. Okay, BBA, you need to WLAN configuration. You need to assign this BBA three here.
okay and also you can assign this uh, bba to this ap and also this one now i can check our cs is enable or not this one sorry or bb enable and cs has and this one academic enable cs will become okay so now basically uh, need to check which la which uh, uh, lap you are uh, uh, basically configured and which you want to use for which group okay so laptop if i want to connect my laptop i need to disable this one and also connect this wlan also enable and go to this configuration configuration desktop wireless you just uh, this one which uh, which ap academy configure this on the academy so this laptop you can see this with the uh, ip it has get mm, sorry okay let me check this one this one apply CSC Academy and WLAN. Okay. okay, three. Uh, I have created three AP and also the three AP group and also created three group and three LAN. Actually, sometimes create a problem when I take this one. So you need to configure one by one slowly because already 5 30 that's why i just want to check which for which one is accepted or not okay this one not uh, connected yet any so this one bba so i need to change the ssid again what way I think this one connected, so I just want to add this laptop to this this network. So next, I think configuration or physical. I need to off on and then connect this one. This this thing. You need to do this one. Sir, we need to finish the lecture session in okay. very short time because uh, now 5.30. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, just one minute. Okay. okay. You can see see this uh, laptop also connected this uh, LAN controller. Okay, basically this is the procedure. And after that, uh, if you go to the LAN interface, you can monitor uh, which IP is connect, which PC is connected, which LAN controller, and also the which group. You can check this one, uh, the how many AP and which uh, how many client, just current client one. So this is the summary, and you can monitor this one. So next, uh, I think uh, eight or nine, we have a, another course, uh, network monitoring and also another course, network management. I, I think the, uh, that, that time that instructor will discuss uh, more uh, in more. Okay, and if possible, please share the lab with us. Okay, I will share this lab and another point, whatever if we set up configuration to static. I think the static means uh, static IP. Static means uh, static IP. Okay, I think uh, you can already uh, send uh, Faisal. I think I, I I want to finish now. Hello. So I I will share the details. I think Faisal, you can now uh, send the link.